Hello everyone. Today we will be covering the second lecture of epidemiology and in this lecture we will cover measurement of mortality. So we all know that most epidemiological studies begin with the mortality data. Each year information on deaths is analyzed and the resulting tabulations are made available by each government. And this data and this data is used for planning of health services and when you have to compare two populations then you require the mortality data and we will see where other areas where we require this mortality data in coming lecture. So from where you get this mortality data? The first one is the death certificate or you can say certificate of cause of death. This is the basis of mortality data. For ensuring national and international comparability, it is very necessary to have a uniform and standardized system of recording and classifying the deaths. So when you have to compare national at national level or international level, so you require a uniform standard system to record the deaths. So the international certificate of cause of death has two parts. The part one deals with the immediate cause of death and the underlying cause. Cause of death, the causes of death to be entered on the medical certificate of cause of death are all those diseases morbid conditions or injuries that either resulted in or contributed to death and circumstances of the accident or violence which produce any such injuries. The underlying cause of death, the underlying cause of death is number one, the disease or injury that initiated the train of events leading to death or the circumstances of the accident or violence that produce the fatal injury. In second part, we record the significant associated diseases that contributed to the death but did not directly lead to death. So these are the some examples of death certificate which is filled in here in our government setup. So here you can see this is the blank one. Here you have to write the bar number, date, time and name of the deceased, address, okay, sex, age, date of birth, marital status, religion, occupation, if age is less than one year, if under 24 hours, you have to, then here comes the cause of death, okay, then any other significant conditions which we said contribute to the death we have to record here. Accidents here, if female, then you have to write this here, the doctor should sign and write his name and this you have to write the name, address, date and time and here you have to give signatures and name of the hospital. This part have to be cut and to be handed over to the caretaker when handing over the body. So this form you have to fill twice the duplicate remains with the hospital and this original copies goes to the office of death and birth registrar so you can see this is filled the date here bar number is here time so this is the name and address of the deceased here is the sex Age in year, date of birth, not written, marital status, married, religion, Hindu, I think, occupation, not written, nothing else. So, no time is mentioned here. So, see the train, what led to the death is written here. Okay, nothing is mentioned here because it's the male, so it's not mentioned here but at least you should write not applicable here okay name and stamp of the institution both it is required in here and duplicate also 
signature is written name is not written which doctor has filled this okay and you have to find out allopathic ayurvedic home although this is the allopathy but this due to the not proper filling of form this is now read as ayurvedic and you have to write the name certified stamp required here but it's not here and this is the second part which you have to fill here again the name date age name of the father mother address and other uh, parameters like smoking non smoking religion and this everything need to be filled okay which is relevant to the disease so this form actually goes to the registration those who are doing the birth and death registration so you have to fill this form in duplicate what are the limitations of mortality data so we have problems and the most important and which largely affect is the incomplete reporting of deaths you just saw that how the forms are filled and how they are incompletely filled so problem in, is not in the developed countries because they have a good system of recording the deaths but in india and other developing countries we have this considerable problem so lack of accuracy that is inaccuracies in the recording of the age and cause of the death are reported here you can see the approximate age is written but date of birth is not written the practice of medical certification of death is not widespread it is not filled everywhere sometimes we skip it if it does exist the cause of death is open inaccurate or incomplete due to such difficulties as lack of diagnostic evidence inexperience on the part of the certifying doctor and absence of post mortem which may be important in deciding the cause of death so we mostly fill inaccurates so as per the international classification of diseases we have to write the code on the death certificates which you see it's not written anywhere on that death certificate and uh, we usually have to medically certify the death so for that you require the post mortem but in india you hardly see you those who are dying in the hospitals their post mortems are not done usually only when you accident or something where legal is involved then only the post mortems are done in here usually to us identify the cause of the death we have to do the post mortem lack of uniformity there is no uniform and standardized method of collection of data and this hampers the national and international comparability so you can have different type of death certificates in different states of india so if it's not uniform it is very difficult to compile the data choosing a single cause of death most countries tabulate mortality data only according to the underlying cause of death other diseases or risk factors and condition which contribute to the patient death are not tabulated and valuable information is lost so mostly when you are working you write only one cause of death and you forget to write other risk factors or other diseases which may lead to cause of the death so when your duty usually you don't have a whole list of international classification of diseases so what i have observed that mostly only the index numbering which is for example for cardiovascular diseases only the repetitive one and one number is used for all the diseases so if you keep using only one code for all the cardiovascular diseases then it will lead to false reporting changing changing coding systems and changing fashions in the diagnosis may affect the validity so we must have uniform definitions and nomenclature and for that 
International classification of diseases, we say ICD coding is mandatory to write on every death certificate. So we can have the uniform classification of deaths. Diseases with low fatality. Lastly, mortality statistics are virtually useless if the disease is associated with low fatality. For example, mental diseases, arthritis, etc. They are hardly noticed and reported. So, where we use this mortality data? Statistics on causes of deaths are important and widely used for a number of purposes. They may be employed in explaining trends and differentials in overall mortality, indicating priorities for health action and the allocation of resources in designing intervention programs and in the assessment and monitoring of public health problems and programs moreover they give important clues for epidemiological research so when you have to do some research so in a population you may require the mortality data of that population for certain programs where high mortality is seen you require the mortality data to implement these programs or when you have to allocate funds to some disease controlling programs then you require the mortality data or when you have to compare two population or two villages, village A is better than village B, then you require the mortality data. So mortality rates and ratios. So how we calculate this mortality data? The simple way is the crude death rate. The simplest measure of mortality is the crude death rate. It is defined as the number of deaths from all causes per 1000 estimated mid-year population in one year in a given place. It is important to recognize that the crude death rate summarizes the effect of two factors. It takes into consideration the population composition and the A-specific death rates which reflect the probability of dying. So what crude death gives us? The, it gives us the, all the deaths which are occurring in a population at a time period all the deaths are taken into the consideration. In summary, the crude death rates have a major disadvantage. That is, they lack comparability for communities with population that differ by age, sex, race, etc. So if you have two populations and you know that they may be differentiated on their age, some may have the high genetic age group, some may have the high pediatric age group, sex may be in one population, more males, may be more females in other population, race, etc. So when these um, differentials are there, it is very difficult to compare two populations. However, they should always be examined first and later the age specific death rates which are the most useful single measure of mortality to be used. When you have different two populations, so you should calculate different mortality data on depending of the age composition. Specific death rates. When analysis is planned to throw light on etiology, it is essential to use specific death rates. The specific death rates may be cause or disease specific, for example, tuberculosis, cancer, accident means how many people are dying from tuberculosis? If you need this answer, then you have to find out only the deaths which are caused by the tuberculosis or by cancer or accidents related to specific groups, age specific, sex specific, age and sex specific, both, etc. When you have to define that for example, how many kids are dying between the age 0 to 5, then you are using the age specific death rates. Or if you have to define that how many females are dying overall from total deaths, then you have to use sex specific death rates. Rates can also be made specific for many other variables such as income, religion, race, housing, 
a number of variables. So if you have to go how many people are dying in high income group or you can you want to define that how many are dying in the low income group or you can decide in which religion more mortality rate is there or which race or what kind of housing for example in kacha houses more death rate is reported or in the pakka houses more death rate is uh, reported so for those you require specific death rates specific death rates can help us to identify particular groups or groups at risk for preventive actions for example specific death rates can help you to make your health programs oriented towards a specific age groups they permit comparisons between different causes within the same population specific death rates are obtained mainly in countries in which a satisfactory civil registration system operates and in which a high proportion of deaths is certified medically so they are very helpful in those places where population is enumerated very well you have all birth data available and all deaths are certified medically then comes the case fatality rate or ratio case fatality rate represents the killing power of a disease it is simply the ratio of deaths to the cases the time interval is not specified case fatality rate is typically used in acute infection diseases example food poisoning cholera measles in chronic diseases its usefulness is limited because the period from onset to death is long and variable the case fatality rate for the same disease may vary in different epidemics because changes in the agent host and environmental factors so this means that one disease can have different rates in one season and another season for example flu influenza in winters you can have different in summers you can have different rate case fatality is closely related to virulence so when you discuss virulence then we use case fatality and highest case fatality is seen in diseases like rabies almost 100% if someone has rabies rabies it means he will die proportional mortality rate or ratio it is sometimes useful to know what proportion of total deaths are due to a particular cause or what proportion of deaths are occurring in a particular age group proportional mortality rate expresses the number of deaths due to a particular cause or in specific age group per 100 or 1000 total deaths for example you have 100 deaths and out of these 100 deaths you will you would like to find out that how many are due to cancer then you will use the proportional mortality rate or ratio proportional mortality rate is computed usually for a broad disease group such as communicable diseases as a whole and for a specific disease of major public health importance such as cancer or coronary heart diseases in industrialized country proportional rates are used when population data are not available so we use proportional rates when the data of the population is not available and you or you don't have the proper data of that population since proportional mortality rate depends upon two variables both of which may differ it is of limited value in making comparison between population groups or different time periods however proportional rates are useful indicators within any population age of the related importance of the specific disease or disease groups as a cause of death mortality from communicable diseases is especially important as it relates mostly to preventable conditions so most of the communicable diseases can be prevented since the prevailing causes of death vary according to age and sex it is desirable to compute proportionate mortality separately for each age and sex group in order to determine measures directed to particular age sex groups for the reduction of preventable mortality so we know that mortality rates can be different at different age groups or sex 
सो वी यूजली कैलकुलेट प्रोपोर्शनेट डेथ रेट्स अमंग डिफरेंट एज एंड सेक्सेस एंड देन वी स्टार्ट आवर मेजर्स और प्रिवेंटेबल मेजर्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन दिस प्रोपोर्शनेट मोर्टिलिटी डाटा proportional mortality rate does not indicate the risk of members of the population contracting or dying from the disease the fifth one is the survival rate it is the proportion of survivors in group example of patients studied and followed over a period for example five year period it is method of describing prognosis in certain disease conditions survival experience can be used as a yardstick for the assessment of standards of therapy the survival period is usually reckoned from the date of diagnosis or start of the treatment survival rates have received special attention in cancer studies so when we where we use survival rates for example someone is diagnosed with the cancer and he asks ki sir what are my chances of survival so there you use this survival rate from diagnosis or when the treatment is started adjusted or standardized rates if we want to compare the death rates of two population with different age composition the crude death rate is not the right yardstick as i said earlier you cannot compare two populations because their constitution is different their age their sex is different so crude death rate for comparing two population is not a good measure this is because rates are only comparable if the population upon which they are based are comparable if the population of two groups are comparable then only the crude death rate is useful and it is cumbersome to use a series of a specific death rates so if two population are different it is very difficult to use a specific death rates of these two populations so what we do in such scenario the answer is the age adjustment or age standardization which removes the confounding effect of different age structures and yields a single standardized or adjusted rate by which the mortality experience can be compared directly so b do the standardization of the age of the population and then we compare the rates the adjustment can be made not only for the age but also for sex race parity etc the thus one can generate age sex and race adjusted rates so we when the population is standardized we can generate the age sex or race adjusted death rates so how we do it we have two methods the number one is the direct standardization and the second one is the indirect standardization both the methods begin by choosing a standard population not the age structure of the population so here we will cover only the theoretical part and in the practical part we will cover how to do it practically so in the direct standardization in the first a standard population is selected usually we selected a population as a standard population and usually this is given by the who a standard population is defined as one for which the numbers in each age and sex groups are known where we know every numeration the population the next step is to apply to the standard population the age specific rates of the population whose crude death rate is to be adjusted or standardized in the next step b apply the standard population the age specific rates of population whose crude death rate we have to adjust or standardize as a result for each age group an expected number of deaths or events in the standard population is obtained these are added together for all the age groups to give the total expected deaths so for that population where which we have to standardize we calculate a specific death rates and then we combine all these death rates to get the total 
the final operation is to divide the expected total number of deaths by the total of the standard population which yields the standardized age adjusted rate. It is usual to use the national population as standard when inter-regional comparisons between cities within a range are made. So you have to use the national population as a standard population when you comparing the two cities. In order that comparisons can be made over a period of years, a standard population can be maintained for that period. When you have to compare a population for different years, for example, this year, next year to next year, then a standard population which we use first time, you have to take that standard population for the next year also. The standard population can be taken from the WHO in its publication Health for All series number 4 on page 77. So this we can use as a standard population which is given by WHO. The direct method of standardization is feasible only if the actual specific rates in subgroups of the observed population are available along with the number of individuals in each subgroup. So when you are comparing the population, the population which you want to compare, you have to have the specific rates of subgroups and number of individuals in the subgroup. Then the indirect age standardization, in it, the standardized multiple ratio is calculated first. The simplest and the most usable form of the indirect standardization is the standardized mortality ratio. Standard mortality ratio is a ratio usually expressed as a percentage of the total number of deaths that occur in the study group to the number of deaths that would have been expected to occur if that study group had experienced the death rates of a standard population or other reference population. In other words, SMR compares the mortality in study group example an occupational group with the mortality that the occupational group would have had if they had experienced national mortality rates. In this method, the more stable rates of the larger population are applied to the smaller study group. And second one is the other standardized techniques. A more complicated method of indirect adjustment which yields absolute age adjusted rate involves the calculation of an index death rate and standardizing factor for each population of interest. For example, life table is an age adjusted summary of current all causes of mortality, regression techniques, these are the efficient means of standardization, multivariate analysis, a computer using regression or similar methods can be standardized for many variables simultaneously. So these are the other methods for standardizations at MBBS level you should just have an idea what are these okay these are for the post graduation what is life tables what is regression techniques and what is the multivariate analysis so here we finishes our lecture which is basically only how to calculate the mortality for a desired population or disease specific. So it's not so much difficult to calculate the mortality data only as my point of view the standardization and indirect standardization of mortality comparisons is a little bit difficult but when you will do the practical in the classes it will be very easy to understand that how we do the standardization and indirect standardizations. Thanks for listening. If you have any queries, you can mail me at akshay at healthandfamily.in or subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will get more lectures related to community medicine. Thank you.